Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to the Shadow and Sun Show. Today, we are going to be a painting. That's right, folks. His supposedly least favorite dragon. Well, uh, we'll get into that in just a moment. Tonight... And by just a moment, you mean a minute or two? Yeah. Tonight, we're painting Frere from Archon Studios' Dungeons & Lasers line. This is uh, the first of their partially or completely clear plastic models. Even though it's really only clear so that they can fill the mold because they're not just going to make a mold of a flake stand and some lightning. Right. I mean, they could have, but... Right. So we went and used as many of the clear plastic pieces as possible. Like you said, the, the, the base and the flight stand... I think that this didn't go here and it went where the other one... No, no. I, okay. I, he has one actual claw that's clear, his chest, and... One that, leg. And, and one leg back here. The, I actually think that instead of the leg, they sh the leg and the claw. cl two claws, yeah. they should have done a tail. Yeah. It would have been nicer if he was completely clear. But we but that, they didn't do that. Because then he would look just like the ghost dragon that's coming out in a few months. And then there would be no reason for it to be anything special. We, we did not assemble the wings because it's going to make it easier for the little guy to paint. And we're probably going to start doing that for now on. As yeah, just, just, just so we can get a more... Uh, you know, hands-on approach to painting the insides of the wings. We tend to have the outside wings, the, the base color of whatever the dragon is, just because it just looks more like a cape or a cloak when they wrap them around or, or that sort of thing. He's going to be using... Well, first thing you might notice, that we sprayed it metallic oh, yeah. blue. Right. Because we've been wanting to use the metallic blue for a while now on a dragon. Right. Or more than just the chest plates. Right. And, and this is a very similar color to the Vallejo Metallic Blue. Gunmetal Blue, yes. yes. That's one of the colors he'll be using is the Vallejo Gunmetal Blue. Show me the other colors you're going to use. Okay, I'm going to be using a very uh, a very liquidy blue paint that can stain things very decently. It's the Vallejo Blue Ink from the Special Effects set. Next. Um, then you have blue mixed with every other color of the sky medieval uh, long-ranged weapon. White. Uh, Niagara. From Folk Art, one of our favorites. And uh, you have what, 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 blue, what paint job would be? Blue Tone. The, uh, Army Painters Quick Shade Blue Tone. We love this. All of their washes are some of our favorites. What are you going to start with? Um, probably... The uh, metallic? Yes. Okay. We got him also a wet pa homemade wet palette. Show off the wet palette. It's this. This is apparently stained. Yeah, it's just paint from... Yeah, I think stuff. what happened was... I don't remember. It, mm -hmm. like it knocked, got knocked over and it stained here. It's basically just a piece of uh, baking parchment paper on top of a couple of wet napkins. And this just helps, you know, as you guys know, to, to keep the paints wet. We live in the desert, and so this time of year, these things are invaluable. There you go. Wet palette. Grab your brush. Mm. Well, you, you people put the paint here. Oh, well. Don't stop playing with that. What, what are you doing? No. He's being silly, folks. Okay, I'm done with that part. Oh. It's been a long time since we used this paint. For yeah. more than just a touch up, I mean. And even then, it's been a while since we used the two metallic boots. Is this enough? It should be for now. Which and I should have used the Army Painter brush. Use whatever brush you're comfortable with. I need some gold to use this brush. He's going to be painting some of the body uh, to blend in with the, the metallic parts that we already painted to sort of blend them in with the, the clear plastic. We're still going to leave a bunch of the clear plastic showing but just not all of it um, there's like, actually like a decent said, difference between these two but i'm pretty sure that changes just use it use it what you can do is put a little bit on the already painted blue fade it in and then fade it into the clear plastic like that. yeah yeah you don't have to go all the way just just a little bit so that you can see some of it in both locations yeah i do really wish they would have added a little bit more clear plastic but I think that all that really should have been it was the tail. Yeah. 
I, I would have preferred the front arms also to have been clear. Yeah, but that's not necessary. And, you know, this just makes us really, really want to see the Ghost Dragon all the more. And, uh, you know, I ask one thing I think they should do is once the Ghost Dragon's done and maybe the next Dungeon Lasers or something, is have an option to have each of the each of the dragons in a clear. Like yeah. maybe Dirk Har. Yeah, you I think I told you I saw, I saw, they, I think they, they cast or, 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 you know, inject molded, however you call it. I think they did one of the other non-standard, non-clear dragons in a clear. And I think they may actually be thinking about you know, making that option open for us, I really don't know, but, you know, I get the, get the impression that it's a possibility that it's something they could do. But I also know that they charge more for the clear plastic. Which makes sense. Than they do regular plastic. And, you know, to be honest, if I could get, you know, like Smorgenrog in the green clear plastic, I think that would be awesome. Smorgenrog? Yeah, yeah. Why Smorgenrog? Um, just because, you know, he's, I could just picture him in green as opposed to orange or clear or blue. But isn't he specifically meant to be... A uh, black dragon? Yeah. yeah. Well, black dragons have green. Or at least when we do, when it'll, it will be. No, but it wasn't he specifically meant to be... Hmm? Oh. Yeah, I probably should turn red. Yeah, I really... Oh, you did a really good job on the neck area. I like that. Mm. It's a really cool color, too. Both yes. of them. The, uh, the spray paint that we used... Uh, it, it, there, there, there is a subtle difference between the two colors, but it, it's actually, this is a lot greener. Yeah, I think you're right, from what I can see here. And also, I wanted to show you guys with the the lightning bolts. We didn't pop them out yet because uh, where is it? When I was cutting out one of the pieces, this just snapped. Okay, right here, I was cutting out. I think uh, part of the body, and this snapped. And this plastic is a lot more brittle and less forgiving when you're clipping than the other plastics they use. Even the other clear plastics that we've used? Yeah, in some cases. So I want, you guys, plastic will always be... I want you guys to be very, very careful when you cut out these lightning bolts. One I would recommend don't cut out. Uh, when you're Cut out each piece only as you need to use it so you know exactly where it goes. A lot of times you'll pop out pieces and just lay them out and work on them. But here you're going to have to do one at a time um, so that you you know where it goes exactly because I also looked at the connection points for these lightning pieces and they're very confusing. So you really want to make sure you're just doing one at a time. And I recommend that you cut around the pieces like I would cut here or here before I even try to cut because if you're not careful and you put too much tension like we showed in our in our uh, stretch goal video. Was it the stretch goal? Oh, I think so. Um, you don't want to go right at this this piece right here, right at that connection point, and just try to snap that, you know, with your clippers. Um, first, you want to relieve. You, you're going to want to relieve the tension maybe over here or over here, somewhere just so that it has somewhere to go that isn't the lightning bolt because. Trying to re-glue these lightning bolts probably wouldn't be impossible, but in order to do it, you're going to end up with glue staining or overlapping in places that you didn't want to paint. The cool thing about these lightning bolts is that they're solid clear plastic, and while we will be putting a little bit of edge highlighting on the lightning to make them stand out just a little bit more, they're, they're so fragile that I don't, want to, I don't want to have to try to glue them back together and... Uh, so be very, very careful with this plastic when you're, when you're clipping these lightning bolts out, especially these really, really crazy ones where there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven places that you're going to have to cut. I would cut over here first, and then I would cut in between here. And to do that, you might be tempted to use clippers like this or even this. If you've got some really good ones that are really, really sharp and you know, almost new, or you resharpen them. Um, when you go to clip, I'm going to just be very slow. That actually went through faster than I thought. Um, but just don't hurry it, don't rush it. Go through nice and slowly. The exact op opposite of what I just did. Yes. Or, or use something like this. Or at least try to. And be even more patient and just slowly cut through 
the plastic with something like a saw. This saw probably isn't the best example, but there are some other smaller saws you guys might have. I have another one, but I couldn't find it. But you just definitely just want to be very, very careful with this because it would be heartbreaking to break a lightning bolt, you know, after you've cut like three or four of these connection points and then have it snap and you're not even done with it. That might release some of the tension, but I definitely, uh, I'm not you looking forward to this. Once, you clip, like, once there's only one clip left or two clips left, there's a much lower chance of it breaking. Absolutely correct. And uh, the farther away you get, which you should clip as far away as you can at first. Yes. Separating each lightning bolt. Yes. And then finish glue, the... And glue the lightning bolt in. You take the lightning bolt out, clip it, do your little bit of filing. Uh, do we have a, a paper towel? No, but I'll go get one for you. Or washing this because yeah, it's kind of I, yeah, damaged. I, I thought I had everything for you, but I guess I missed that one thing. You're not going to be doing any dry brushing tonight, so this should be enough. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that... Uh, what, what, what's with the white? Oh, that's what I was... I was gonna do the. Oh, okay. I, that's a total shock to me. I thought I thought I knew what he was doing, but mm -hmm. sometimes he pulls something out, out of out of thin air. And we're probably going to do the in, interior wings similar to this. Is that right? Yes. Some sort of well, mix of maybe yellow. Maybe not yellow. But some some contrasting brightish color, because you, be orange, but we're not doing orange. Right. Uh, something you know to go with blue and sort of a lightning theme. Uh, we're also going to be looking at a lot of videos of lightning. To get an idea. No, it's actually purple. It's right. Well, it's white, but because usually at night, the sky is a dark purple. Right. Or dark blue, it turns into a purplish. Is that thin enough? I, I know since it's a Vallejo, it's already pretty thin, but... Yeah, Vallejos are probably my fa one current favorite. Uh, yeah. Citadels are okay, but the bottles are not good. Yeah, I mean, I, they're good, but only for once uh, you're done. I, I think at this point, uh, Games Workshop and Citadel are just being stubborn. Just about every other company I know of uses a bottle that's friendly to the the uh, the consumer, although maybe they like the memes of of the spilt uh, agra Agrax oh, Earth Shaker. Oh, there is a mistake brush liquid. No, that doesn't do much. It's just kind of annoying because of the... It's getting on the brush. Oh. It mixed with the brush. It is actually... Yeah, I, 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 the, the dropper bottles, as soon as I saw them the uh. very first time, I knew I was done with, with Citadel paints. Even though we do still need the... The... the that, that's, that's different because it's a dry technical paint. It, it really has no danger of spilling out of the bottle. It, it's actually hard to get it out of the bottle. Um, I have to use like a toothpick or a spatula or something oh, to scoop that. Oh, this is actually bad. I can't use this brush anymore. Okay. It's pretty bad, actually. It's okay. You can always go over it. Yeah, but no, this is... Use your mistake brush. Okay, which is the mistake brush? Yeah, any brush that you're not using. Okay. Um, because you don't want... It's easier to use a mistake brush than to use a second coat. Um, the, the day I learned this trick uh, was, was, was a very happy day. Um, and I, I don't know why I didn't think of it sooner, but, you know. Has there been other people done this now? Oh, yeah, yeah. I've seen other people use this, the, the mistake I'm pretty brush. sure you didn't come up with it? Well, yeah, I actually did, and then I saw somebody else use it, and I'm like, oh, it is a thing. Because, uh, you know, if you get to your paint before it dries, this this is much better. Yeah, but, if it does dry? Then, well, then you got to go over with another coat of paint, and you know, uh, it, it, it's just it's just it's yeah, a great it technique dry. if you if you it did dry. Yes, it did. Okay, well, you got as much of it as you could, right? Yes. Uh, especially when you're dealing with you know smaller like character models and, and humanoids and things like that, adding that second you know coat of paint can just you know really you know mess up the overall. Paint job. I, I although I've seen you know miniatures from you know twenty five plus years ago that you're not getting that paint off and there's you know there's three coats on the face and you know without stripping it you know and risk damaging it in the, in the oh. sonic cleaner. Okay. You all right? 
Yeah, it's just the... the oh, you cut it with the horns or mm -hmm. or whatever. On that. And this, it's not that this dragon isn't my favorite or isn't that I don't like it. It was just very difficult. I found that... Uh, you were frustrated? Well, I was I was being overly cautious with the, the, the gluing aspect. Because like like before when we were working on the uh, yeah, the Martian Walker, uh, we were having trouble with the clear plastic fogging up, even using PVA glue. But what I found is uh, part of the fogging up comes from gases that are released in the process of the plastic trying to work. So when I was doing this, like when I glued the base in, uh, I only glued the I, I glued the base into the one half of the dragon so that the gases were able to release and not catch on the other half of the dragon body and other things like when I did the base I didn't want to just use a super glue and I definitely didn't want to use a white glue because that, that you know has no halting power whatsoever except on paper so when okay, you're gluing this guy the, this is I mean obviously it's I'm not done I still need a lot more mm -hmm. but it's mostly Uh, how long is this? I have no idea. Well, no, obviously, you, you don't. About 10 minutes. 15, maybe. 15? Don't worry about the time. Okay. Well, I'm just... Because I don't want this video to be too short, but, I mean, I, there's not much I can do. Yeah, that, that is one thing about the clear plastic. It, it definitely takes away from your paint job, but... What's going to take away? It's more that... I don't have anything else to do right now. Until it dries? Yes. Yeah, I figured it was going to be a short video because... Unless you want to do like the base with the wash, but I, I wanted to add water to that. Um, and we tend to, we tend to you know, keep a video. This, this will be the base coat video. The next one is usually the washes and then the dry brushes is the third video. I really like this. Uh, it was just, it was just very frustrating to to uh, work with, uh, mostly just worrying about making a mistake that that I've never made before because I've only, the only clear plastic I've ever done has been canopies for airplanes. And with this one, you know, he's all clear and I didn't want his body to fog up. So I used, even though I did use model glue, I used it very, very sparingly. And I found a little trick, I don't know if it, it actually did anything, but I let I put the glue where I was going to put the glue on the model, and then I let it sit for about sixty seconds and, and spread it out so that you know any uh, gases that might be released were were released just into the open air as opposed to inside the the dragon body, and we got pretty lucky. Uh, I didn't see any fogging up anywhere when I glued the the claw and when I glued the clear leg. All those points, I did use model glue, and they, you know, they, they did their they did their thing. They didn't fog up, so just you know, be very sparing with the glue because it doesn't take much to melt the two pieces of plastic together. And once you know, once it's melted, unless you you know jam a screwdriver or a knife in there to try to pry it apart, it's it's permanent. Unlike super glue. Oh, so which, the, when I said you were frustrated, you were frustrated at something completely different. Oh, what was I frustrated about? Um, the fact that the you were almost frustrated that they even did anything clear at all, but yeah, it, it, it it's weird how he's got one back leg that's clear. You know, I, I get the idea that he's trying. It's like he's he's you know maybe charging up his lightning blast or something like that, or he's partly that. made out of lightning, or you know. I think just, they just made it clear because they needed something to fill the mold with. Maybe, maybe. It would have been nicer if the if it was one of the front front legs. It would have been nicer arms. if they just got rid of the claws, that arm entirely. Yeah, it would have been more even. It just it seems wouldn't weird. even been it would have even been fine if they got rid of the base. It wouldn't have been perfect, but it would have been fine. Yeah, I really like the base. And we're actually we were talking earlier about possibly putting a T light under it. If we can find a either a clear T light or a blue T well, light. Well we know that all those exist. We just need to go online for them. Yeah. And, and just so that his base is lighting up, uh, just, you know, a little bit of flickering down there, we thought would be pretty neat since, you know, it's already clear and it'll help, you know, you'll be able to see the, the light coming up from underneath and maybe reflecting off the lightning bolts because there's like, you know, seven lightning bolts on this dragon. 
Six or seven, I'm not sure. One, two, three, four. There's six lightning bolts on this sprout. Looking good, buddy. Looking good. Yeah, I'm a little jealous because I wouldn't have mind painting this guy myself. I think I'm actually done for today. Oh, really? Yeah. I think that one horn could use a little bit more. Oh, the front? Yeah. I didn't do anything with it. Right, this one right here. Yeah, oh, that one. It just it looks a little... It is, it is a, you know, craft paint. And, you know, even though most people hate these for painting miniatures, I found that there are some ways you can you can paint them and, and, and get a decent effect, if not a really good effect. The Xeno Dragons were a perfect example. We used a lot of them. His was mine. Um, the, for some reason, the, the paint did nothing. I think it just, for some reason, lost its neon effect. Well, we'll find out at the end of the month, won't we? With mm -hmm. this one. I mean, we can always shine the black light on it before. Oh, yeah, I know. Okay. We're definitely going to need to wash these paints because I found that just putting them, spinning them around the water does pretty much nothing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I always clean everything after the video. Yeah. Okay, cap it up. Let's put these all away. Put your palette lid. You always forget that. Yes. Put the paints all together and get that on, all right? Well, there you have it, folks. That was pretty quick and easy. Um, I guess you're going to do these off camera. Oh. That's fine. We already told everybody. I can believe we forgot that they were even there. <laughs> I know, it's okay. It should probably be twice as long if we didn't know. It's, it's okay, it's just boring white paint, and then he's just going to go yeah. over with something else. But we can do that and in the next video. Else would be, uh, it matter but let's show off the okay. paint job so far. Nice transition there, I like that. From metallic blue to metallic blue. Do you like how I did the... The what? The, the clear? Yeah, yeah, that's what I was talking about. From the blue... No, you were talking about from, from the green or blue to the... The tail, yeah. To the... Darker blue. To the... Sprite you, The Sprite paint looks to the green or blue. Yeah. Speaking of green... <laughs> no, I'm <laughs> not doing that again. Okay. The funny reference, the haha -ha funny reference, I already did it. So there you have it, folks. That's uh, our first installment of Freyr. We'll be back next Sunday to do more, but before that, we've got a Tuesday video that we hope will inspire you guys, and then a pretty neat, easy, possibly even quick craft on Thursday. Oh, no. I wouldn't go that far. It shouldn't take too long. Yeah, it The shouldn't. average person should be able to Hack it apart, glue it, and yeah. But it's not going to be to the point where we're, we're finish the whole thing except for the paint. Well, anyways, that has been today's episode of the Shadow and, and Sun show, uh, and that's that's it for today. Have a Tonight. great week. Have a great week, folks. Thanks for stopping by. Make sure you hit that like button on your way out, and we will see you guys soon. Good night. Go.